Number 9. Timothy McVeigh On April 19, 1995, Timothy McVeigh bombed the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, resulting in the deaths of 168 people and injuring 680 others. McVeigh was arrested by an Oklahoma State trooper who noticed a missing license plate on his yellow Mercury Marquis. The FBI released a sketch of a suspect who rented a rider truck in Kansas, and McVeigh was identified. He was indicted on 11 federal counts, including conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction, use of a weapon of mass destruction, destruction with the use of explosives, and eight counts of first-degree murder for the deaths of law enforcement officers. McVeigh was found guilty on all counts and executed on June 11, 2001, at the Federal Correctional Complex in Terre Haute, Indiana. For his last meal, he requested two pints of mint chocolate chip ice cream. The Oklahoma City bombing was the deadliest act of homegrown terrorism in U.S. history, and his execution was highly publicized and controversial. Number 8. David Leon Woods On April 7, 1984, David Woods and two partners, Greg Sloan and Pat Sweet, went to the home of 77-year-old Juan Placencia in Garrett, Indiana to steal a television. Woods stabbed Placencia 21 times before throwing the knife in a nearby creek. Woods's mother suspected her son was involved in the murder. She consented to a search of her residence, which revealed a knife sheath and a stained towel. Woods was taken to the station, and while preparations were being made for a polygraph, he broke down and gave a complete confession. Sloan testified at trial after entering a guilty plea to aiding in murder. David Leon Woods was executed by lethal injection on May 4, 2007, in Michigan City, Indiana. He requested a pizza and a birthday cake for his last meal, which he ate with his family before being put on a liquid diet. In his final statement, he apologized to Placencia's relatives. Number 7. Thomas J. Grasso In 1990, Thomas J. Grasso strangled 87-year-old grandmother Hilda Johnson with her own Christmas tree lights and stole $12 and her television set. Six months later, he killed 81-year-old retiree Leslie Holtz with the same method strangulation and bashing in his skull. Grasso used Holtz's social security check to buy cocaine and sirloin steak, raising suspicion with investigating detectives. He was arrested two weeks later. Grasso was executed by lethal injection on March 20, 1995. For his last meal, he requested two dozen steamed mussels, two dozen steamed clams, a Burger King double cheeseburger, six barbecued spare ribs, two strawberry milkshakes, half a pumpkin pie with whipped cream, diced strawberries, and a can of SpaghettiOs with meatballs. His last words were, I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Number 6. Ronnie Lee Gardner Ronnie Lee Gardner murdered attorney Michael Burdell during an attempted escape from a Salt Lake City courthouse in 1985. At the time of the slaying, Gardner was in court. Accused of killing Melvin John Otterstrom during a 1984 robbery at a bar, Gardner's case spent nearly 25 years in the court system, prompting the Utah House of Representatives to introduce legislation to limit the number of appeals in capital cases. On June 15, 2010, Gardner ate his last meal, which consisted of steak, lobster tail, apple pie, vanilla ice cream, and 7-Up before beginning a 48-hour fast, while watching the Lord of the Rings film trilogy and reading Divine Justice. According to his lawyers, the fast was motivated by spiritual reasons. Gardner was executed by the state of Utah on June 18, 2010, at 12.15 a.m. by a firing squad. Number 5. Aileen Warnos From 1989 to 1990, while working as a street prostitute on the highways of Florida, 33-year-old Aileen Warnos robbed and shot seven of her male clients. She claimed she acted in self-defense after they raped or attempted to rape her. The media dubbed her the Damsel of Death, and she was portrayed by Charlize Theron in the film Monster, for which the actor earned an Oscar. On October 9, 2002, at 9.47 a.m., Warnos was executed by lethal injection in Florida State Prison. She made several statements before her execution, including accusing the prison staff of putting dirt, 
urine, and saliva in her food and abusing her mentally to drive her to suicide. Her last meal was a cup of coffee. Number four, Victor Feger. In 1960 in Dubuque, Iowa, Victor Feg called Dr. Edward Bartels, claiming that a woman needed immediate medical attention. When the doctor arrived, Feger kidnapped and later killed him in Illinois. Bartel's body was found in a cornfield there with a single gunshot to the head. A few days later, Fager was arrested in Birmingham, Alabama after trying to sell Dr. Bartel's car to James B. Alford, who tipped off the FBI. On March 15, 1963, Victor Fager was executed by hanging in Iowa. For his last meal, he requested a single olive with a pit. He chose an olive because he hoped that the tree symbolizing peace would sprout from his grave. Instead, officials found the olive pit in his suit pocket during burial. Number 3. Philip Workman On August 5, 1981, Philip Ray Workman was robbing a Wendy's restaurant in Memphis, Tennessee. After an employee triggered a silent alarm, Lieutenant Ronald Oliver and two other officers were first to arrive at the scene. Workman attempted to flee across a nearby parking lot, then shot and killed Oliver with a 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol. Workman was executed by lethal injection by the state of Tennessee on May 9, 2007. For his last meal, he requested to donate a large vegetarian pizza to a homeless person in Nashville, declining his own meal. Though the prison refused his last meal request, many other people across Tennessee fulfilled his wish and brought hundreds of pizzas to homeless shelters on his execution day. Number 2. James Edward Smith On March 7, 1983, Insurance executive Larry D. Rohus was fatally shot by James Edward Smith during a heist inside a second-floor cashier's office close to the Astrodome. Smith waived his right to a final appeal, but the U.S. Supreme Court's four justices found that Smith lacked the mental capacity to make such a choice. Four votes are required by the court's norms to request a formal reconsideration of the case. But because the justices were just one vote away from stopping the execution, Justice William J. Brennan Jr. lamented that, For the first time in recent memory, a man will be executed after the court has decided to hear his claim. On the 26th of June, 1990, Smith was executed by lethal injection in the execution chamber in Huntsville, Texas. For his last meal, he requested a lump of dirt. According to Texas A&M University soil experts, the dirt was believed to be eaten in voodoo rituals, which Smith practiced and believed in. Smith had hoped to perform a voodoo ritual that he thought would assist his reincarnation. The prison unsurprisingly denied Smith's request, and he settled on a cup of yogurt instead. Number 1. Odell Barnes Odell Barnes Jr., was convicted of the 1989 robbery, rape, and murder of Helen Bass. On November the 29th, 1989, in Wichita Falls, Texas, Bass, 42, was surprised by Barnes, who had broken into her home while at work. Bass was beaten, stabbed, raped, and killed by a headshot. Barnes's conviction was based on forensic evidence and witness testimony placing him at the crime scene. Barnes was unable to afford his lawyers, and the Wichita County Public Defender's Office was not equipped to handle his case, so two local attorneys were appointed for him. They had an insufficient budget and minimal preparation. No defense investigation was conducted, and no forensic tests were ordered by the defense. Barnes was executed by lethal injection on March 1, 2000 in Huntsville, Texas. For his last meal, he requested justice, equality, and world peace. In his final statement, he thanked his supporters for proving his innocence even though it was not acknowledged by the courts. He added, Life has not been that good to me, but I believe that now, after meeting so many people who support me in this, that all things will come to an end, and may this be fruit of better judgments for the future.